before we leave this guy, uh, I want to take a closer look at some of the issues with it and see if maybe they're addressable. So for starters, when I reach inside this bore here, the part that is ground for three quarter inch or approximately three quarter inch is only the outside, I don't know, maybe quarter inch or less. Uh, that would be uh, uh, six millimeters or less. That's, that's ridiculous. That means the whole bearing surface for the ground surface to mate on is only about this big. <laughs> and so the rest of this is not actually meeting any material, which is why, among other things, this thing slops around so much. Also, the hole, the bore of the hole is larger than the cutter. And what happens when, that, when you're tightening from one side, in a three-jaw chuck like this style, when you tighten, even if there was a bit of a gap, you're tightening from three sides, which is going to tend to want to automatically center the bit. But when you're tightening from one side like this, and you push the cutter against the other side of the bore, you're uh, shifting it off center automatically, uh, which is a horrible design, which means this needs to be ground pretty accurately. Um, and uh, let's just measure and see what we get for those values. Let's start with measuring an inexpensive annular cutter here. It measures at 0.748 from widest point to widest point, and it's, so it's consistent across the gap, maybe five tenths here. As a second sample, here's a Hoogan annular cutter, and it measures 0.749 as the high spot. Let's take a look at uh, the inside bore. So it's uh, 751, so that's, uh, that's gonna leave two thousandths, but the fact that it's only grabbing on a tiny area uh, is not helpful. And when these things push in, opposite them is a gap. I think it's probably going to be fairly easy to replace because this looks like a Morse taper too. Let's see if we can pop this off. All right, let's see if this guy removes. I was going to take this over and sand it off uh, and make it smooth, which would be better by a lot because if the all the little parts that are sticking up here are grabbing on the side of the aluminum casting. But let's just uh, use it as delivered. So let's see, the flat side is this side. Okay, that's working like a charm, isn't it? No. All right. So that didn't work very well. And uh, like I suspected, it was, uh, it was wearing down the material the first time riding on the top part of the uh, stamping here. Here's a somewhat better make made tool. Let's see if we can pop it out with this one. Wow, they pressed that in there within an inch of its life. So it is a Morse taper too. And I looked on eBay and you can actually buy one of these. Now, one of the things I'd like to check here is how accurately they ground the bore in this guy. There is a really large exit ball bearing from here. Uh, which is nice. That's, that seems like a good design. Uh, let's see what we can do about checking the runout just in the Morse taper bore. Before we head over there, maybe you can see what I'm talking about. So the ground section is just at the very edge. I think that's to allow coolant to go around the outside of the cutter a little bit. I don't, but I don't see the advantage to that particularly. All right, so the bore's out by less than half a thousand. For such an inexpensive device, I think that's pretty darn good. Something else I just noticed is actually on right now. That looks like the magnet's on, right? Actually, that's magnet on. These indications are wrong. <laughs> I wonder if I open this up, if this is a single pull double throw uh, switch and I could just flip the wire to the other side so that that would be on and that would be off. Although you probably want off to be down so in case you drop something on it, it would turn it off, I don't know. But <laughs> it is backwards. <laughs> well, let's see if I can uh, reverse the polarity. If that's a simple on off switch, then they just got the silk screen wrong, which is hilarious. <laughs> It might explain a lot of things about this uh, particular drill motor. I have removed the handles here just for ease of access. Also, it is unplugged. 
Oh, look at that. There's your full way bridge. Oh, look at that. Yes. I could just move this to the other side and make that right. So we're going to we're going to do that cuz uh, <laughs> that's just nutty. And uh, let me yeah, uh, let me pop this over here. Yeah, so I can just move these two wires here to the other side and that will uh, make this guy go on when the one the the universal on symbol <laughs> is down. <laughs> And if I wanted, I could spin this guy around. It's just held in here with pressure, too. So I could do that as well. Now let's move these real quick. Not that it's any surprise, but there is no heat shrink inside here like you would normally expect to find. I mean, with all metal case and whatnot. They at least do ground the whole outside of this. So if one of these wires were to touch the metal plate or the, the case, uh, they, would, uh, they would just trip the breaker. Or blow this fuse right here. I think what this could really use would be a complete rewiring. <laughs> now, when this guy goes on, the magnet will follow. So inside here, this is a pretty simple device. Inside here, you have just your AC coming in. You have power going to the drill motor that goes through this switch here. And this switch is 16 amp 250, 20 amp 125. So hopefully it'll survive the on off of a motor. You do have inductive uh, kickback that tends to arc across contacts of switches. So if you turn on big motors, uh, you can easily damage switches. Uh, on top of that, um, you have the electromagnet. And the electromagnet is on the output of this switch and it goes through just a full wave bridge here. You can see the full wave bridge rectifier right down here inexpensively done but effective and uh, it looks like this magnet could have been wired well 120 or 220 uh, they put it hmm no it's in series so uh, I'm figuring yeah that's interesting it must be a different magnet for 220 because they put it in series which you would think would be for the larger voltage but uh, I don't think it is because I'm running this off 110, so <laughs> that's a really odd. What does that make it, 110 or nothing? There are two, uh, maybe they never intended that, there are two coils in, in this guy. Although you think, again, you could run the coils, you could run the coils either in series or in parallel. Boy, not great connections, these spade lugs not making great connection at all. Just a quick test. There you go, on, off, on, on, off. Okay, so we're good. Really should just rewire the whole thing. I might very well do that. When I was talking about the two coils on the bottom, here's the potted coils of the electromagnets. There are two of them and they are separate. You could potentially control them separately. And you know what would be really handy is to add an XY table to this guy so that you could micro position, you lock the electromagnet down and then you could re you could position the part anywhere you want, uh, the drill anywhere you wanted it. Within a short range, all you need is like a, you know, a couple inch each direction and uh, you should be more than good to go. That would be a really nice addition. I, s I suspect some better units have that. Now let's pop the C-clip, uh, circlip off here. And I suspect, expect here's the, the O-rings that we were feeling. Oh yeah. So they did tempt some sort of lubricant in there. Just uh, not great. Oh, there's all kinds of debris in there too. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like swarf from the cutting. Or no, it's not what I thought it was. It's shredded rubber instead. So the O-rings already started to shred Matter of fact, it's damaged all over the place. So this thing's just gonna start its life by leaking and then get worse. <laughs> That's great. All right, so there are two inlet holes here in the middle of where this thing should sit, like here to here. 
These are what the O-rings ride on, and they're ground, so they did uh, take a little bit of care. Interestingly enough, inside there's a spring. I'm not quite sure what that's for. There's also a sir clip here. Let's pop that guy off and see what uh, where we get. All right, let's see if we can get this sir clip out. Okay. Well, there's the spring-loaded part. I can feel that. So there's a washer, and there's an Allen screw pressed in the washer. And the rest of it is just wide open. That is really strange. So are they using this? I'm not quite sure how they're using this. Maybe when you put the cutter in far enough? No. I, I honestly don't know. Why do you think uh, this whole assembly's in there? Why would you want a spring-loaded Allen screw in here? Because the coolant is not under pressure in any way, shape, or form. It uh, drips down by gravity. So I'm not quite sure. Let's grab an annular cutter, see how deep that goes. So I don't see any way for fluid to go around the outside of the annular cutter because it would be sitting about like this. I don't really understand the spring-loaded part either. I'm not quite sure what its utility is. Maybe the annular cutter just slightly depresses it. Let's pop this guy back together real quick. and uh, see if the annular cutter just slightly depresses this washer, in which case they might be using it as a really horrible valve design, but uh, maybe that's what they're doing. Okay, so the C-clip, the circlip is pretty big. Uh-huh, it might, because that's the first position, but that's not its final seating point here. There it is, down there. So now, it doesn't make contact at all. I gotta tell you, I'm not sure what's that for. Maybe that's to control how quickly the fluid leaks around the outside of the Allen screw. I'm not sure, that's just a really weird design to me, because it's, it's, it's an Allen head bolt that they're pushing up against a standard, what looks like, I don't know, it might be a 12 millimeter or 10 millimeter uh, washer. Uh, that's just really, really odd. Anyone have any ideas? I'm happy to hear them. Please leave them in the comments because uh, we could all learn something here because I'm not sure why they bothered. I mean, they wouldn't have bothered with the expense of the spring if it wasn't needed for something. I just can't tell what. What I'm thinking here is I might replace this whole assembly here with a slightly better one and see if I can improve the run out but in the fir in fir at first, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to reseat this Morse taper, and maybe it's how the Morse taper is seated. It's uh, it's ground, but pretty coarsely ground, uh, so maybe it wasn't seated well. And there is no getting around this horrible lip, which I'm not sure why they did that either, why they relieved this inside, because that was actually an extra operation they had to perform. So I don't know. Maybe that's to allow fluid around the outside, but I don't know what advantage that is because these cutters won't allow the fluid around the outside because they're going to be locked in like this. Like uh, like this right here. And it does not push down. The cutter does not reach the, uh, this, the Allen screw in there. So I'm not sure what that's all about, the cap screw. Um, yeah, I really don't know. And you can see how sloppy this is. That's a couple thousand slop right there. And then on top of that, when you tighten this down, it's going to cant it. Uh, because these screws are below where it's supported, so it's going to tend to shift it a little like this, which is probably why this thing is out of round so badly. And apparently this is not terribly hardened either, because you can see how it completely flattened off the edge of this guy uh, with the uh, removal tool, the Morse taper and removal tool. It, uh, it uh, dented the whole bottom of the Morse taper, so this isn't even hardened. That's really sad.
Overall, my take on this uh, magnetic drill press is that it was really inexpensive. It was less than a quarter, probably less than a fifth of some of the higher end models. It is very crudely put together, not designed for longevity. So you've got plated steel, uh, mild steel dovetails that are screwed on going to an aluminum extruded assembly that the motor's mounted on. So if you're using this long term, it's going to wear out pretty darn quickly. Um, the run out on the included arbor is horrible. The motor's actually pretty decent. It's not awesome, but half a thousandth probably isn't bad considering. Uh, cast aluminum body all the way around. I thought this was going to be plastic. This is cast aluminum where the motor sits. Uh, this is the reduction gearing in here. And uh, surprisingly robust. Nice cast aluminum body. Uh, the electromagnet is very strong. Uh, it came miswired, which I had to fix. Uh, and the wiring is not a particularly well done job, so I'm probably going to do spend a little more time and rewire this at work. Uh, overall, I think for the money, comparing it directly to the 300 so dollars it cost, I'd probably give it a three out of five, meaning it's adequate. It'll do the job. The run out here means it's gonna wear out your very expensive annular cutters faster than normal uh, because they're gonna process, which means they're gonna tend to rub on a side. That's definitely not great. And uh, uh, it will do crude holes. The uh, drill chuck was optional, which I bought and uh, that's something I'd recommend getting. Some of the kits actually come with one. Uh, the one I got did not, so I would look for that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a three out of five just because it's utilitarian. It is definitely not well made in any, in any way, shape, or form. The only surprising thing about it is the quality of the cast aluminum housing. Oh, and remember, I was talking about maybe these, the annular cutters that came with it do not push that Allen screw down. But guess what? The drill chuck that I bought aftermarket does push that Allen screw down when you uh, seat this all the way. Look at that. So that must be acting as a very crude valve for the coolant. When you push this in, the coolant will flow. When it's out, the coolant won't flow. That is uh, funky, to say the least. Well, that's all I have to say about this. Uh, you know, buy it knowing what you're getting going in. Don't think you're getting a quality tool. If not, if you do need that, then buy someone else's. Hoogan, Milwaukee, DeWalt, probably anybody is going to be better. And that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you find it interesting. I hope to see you next time.